calm before the storm here in Los Angeles. Today is October 14th, day 14th of Occupy LA, and you're watching Inside Out News. protesters got on a bus that went over to Beverly Hills to join in solidarity with the with the workers who are currently on strike at the Bel Air Hotel. This evening Jimmy Dore came by the City Hall to give a performance with some of his friends. Jimmy Dore is a comedian who also has a radio show on the local Pacifica radio station here in Los Angeles called KPFK. And the food tent appears to have reopened, although they are currently still not serving hot food. Yesterday, we reported that the city was going to turn the sprinkler system back on and that the protesters were going to have to move from the grass onto the sidewalk to sleep. It appears that last night, the protesters remained on the grass despite the sprinklers being turned on. We have not received any word that the city council or the police disapprove of the protesters remaining on the grass overnight, despite, despite the fact that there is a city rule that states that the parks close at 10 p.m. There are still a few hundred tents here at City Hall in downtown Los Angeles, and yet the demonstrations here have been quiet. There should be an average of 500 or so occupiers here, and yet the number of people holding signs on the corner of Temple and First Street seems to be dwindling. Tomorrow is a big day for Occupy LA, and we'll see if the action tomorrow will bring out a larger group of demonstrators. The protesters will be meeting at 10.30 a.m. tomorrow here at City Hall to march in solidarity with the International Day of Action. The organizers here have also lined up some entertainment and there is some word that certain celebrities will be present tomorrow, similar to what happened last week when the protesters got a visit from actor Danny Glover and musician Tom Morello of The Night Watchmen and Rage Against the Machine. Carlos Marroquin, an activist who represents homeowners who have been victimized by the banks, marched with the occupiers over to the California Superior Court to show support for the group that served papers to the judges of the California court system. These papers demanded that judges who sit on bank-related cases and who also receive money from banks be investigated and also called for their resignation. We had a chance to talk to Carlos about what his work is and how and what his relationship is with the occupation. Carlos, so uh, you marched over here to the Superior Court uh, where they presented papers today to the judges uh, to start an investigation of some of the judges who are receiving money from banks and also presiding on cases that relate to foreclosures or anything with banks and home loans. How does that relate to you and what is it? What is your involvement with Occupy Los Angeles? Yes, I represent victimized homeowners. Homeowners that have been uh, victimized by banking institutions, financial institutions, where they have literally stolen people's homes. Uh, I've been fighting this for the past five years and we have well documented information and even within the court system where clearly the, the homeowners have been uh, victimized by not only the banks, but 
by also by the judges, by the court system, where they illegally have thrown people out, you know, out of their homes. And what's your relationship with Occupy LA? Well, uh, I'm joining Occupy LA. I am occupying because, again, uh, this is a way that we can voice our, 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 our hurts, our, our opinions, and again, you know, our demands against uh, a system that has failed us. And you were saying that you and other homeowners are going to be tenting out tonight? Yes, uh, we are formally uh, joining the Occupy LA. We're going to be camping, we're going to be occupying, and we are here for the long haul. And how many people are in your group? Well, we have several, a couple, uh, I would say about 20 homeowners within our group uh, that we have formed. Uh, also, we have been informed that they're giving us a space in the Occupy LA newspaper where we're going to be able to present our, our thoughts, our articles, and our events because, again, this is across America where homeowners have been victimized. Many people have asked how long the protesters plan to occupy the various cities and parks across the country. Many of the protesters that I have spoken with have said that they will remain here indefinitely, or at least until their demands are met. I asked the protesters what a post-occupation world would look like. That is, a world in which the occupiers' demands have been met. Here's what a few of them had to say. Uh, as long as the 99% isn't focused on totally excluding the 1%, then it might be a halfway decent world. But, you know, that 1% is here for a reason. You know, it's, it's growth, technology, you know. All right, Occupy So LA. do you think people will Being be better right. off once the 99% gets uh, some of the power back from the 1%? Well, I believe the 99 cent, we've always had the power. It's so whether we choose to exercise it or not, you know? I mean, the system that's being set up here is the same system our forefathers set up 200 and something years ago. You know, you're just repeating the same thing. But you have to make a stance. There should be city council members out here occupying Los Angeles. They occupy a seat on the government. They occupy a seat on the council. Come occupy LA with us. Uh, Post-occupation would be we would revert back to actually democratic societies versus corporate dominated societies where the people actually had more control, um, more vote and power versus what we have today, which is a corporate dominated society. So do you think it would be better or uh, worse? Much better, of course. Well, I'm, I, I believe in, in the concept of a, of a resource-based economy. Uh, I, I think that, um, uh, that you know, the, the time when, uh, then when, uh, when we live by natural, by natural scarcity um, is, uh, is potentially over due to automation and, uh, and that we need to, you know, move into an era in which uh, uh, resources are, are managed, uh, you know, all over the globe. And uh, and that's what my, my world would look like. Everything would be free. Um, you would uh, you would you know uh, uh, work if you had an interest in, in something, which you would eventually have an interest in something because you you know it would get uh, it would get boring just sitting around. Um, and uh, and and people wouldn't have to you know uh, uh, submit to uh, to a to a system that uh, that that uses them up and discards you uh, as, as well as you know all of the other collateral damage that comes with uh, with the monetary system tomorrow is the international day of action occupy la will be meeting here at city hall at 10:30 a.m. from here they will march to per pershing square and meet with other organizations at 12 p.m., they will march from Pershing Square to the Financial District. This ends our broadcast for tonight. We will be back tomorrow to cover what looks like an action-packed day of events and demonstrations. This is Margot Pias signing off for Inside Out News. Good night.